Mercedes are still making huge gains on their car and now even George Russell is confirming this to be true. The Mercedes squad is obviously in a bit of a hole but improving upon what their W14 already is. They're maximizing the package that they have and they're trying to go for their best really window that they can get with this W14. Will a track like Baku really suit them? I don't think so and they might even struggle in Miami but with a track like Imola coming where the strong suits are very important and huge upgrades coming, Imola might be a chance for them to win. Will Baku be similar or the same as Melbourne? That is uh, a very difficult question to answer. Melbourne had been front limited putting more strain on the front axle, probably Baku will be rear limited. So it's, it's a very, very different set of circumstances. There is some news on what these upgrades could potentially bring, and I have some inside info as to how these upgrades will look for the Mercedes squad. And thank you all so much for supporting. The support means everything to me. I love you guys, and thank you for just getting me to even to here. But if you are not subscribed, please like and subscribe. It would mean the world for me, and also, hit that notification bell. Let's get back into the video. W14 is getting B-spec, essentially. It's getting a completely different revised car, but it can't change internal things like the chassis. So Hamilton's complaint of the actual car being way too much towards the front and the actual seat being way too close to its front tires won't really get changed. Sadly, that is something that they will have to deal with. But clearly he was able to deal with it in a track like Australia where it is definitely front oriented towards the car and I guess it wasn't as impactful and Hamilton was able to drive. Now a track like Austria where the rear is extremely important didn't work on these upgrades shredding their tires when they have to actually use their rear. Austria can be a very terrible race for them. But with big upgrades coming, they're probably looking to change a lot of that rear suspension where Red Bull is really keen on killing the rest of the grid. Something Red Bull can do that no other team on the grid can do is really optimize their straight line speed by having a triple DRS, but also being able to keep the car low enough to where the plank isn't getting destroyed and they're still able to just go in a straight line at rapid paces, making even the Mercedes look like an F2 car. Big changes can be suggested that a lot of the rear will be changed and really being able to figure out how the diffuser can be smaller even with its gearbox change which is one of the issues that Mercedes is running into right now and making the actual rear of the car one and one as a flow. The real big problem with this W14 is the floor is super complicated from the top and the bottom, not really allowing for airflow to go extremely through it. While they gained a lot of downforce and there were rumors even last year of them gaining even more downforce in 2023 if the rules weren't changed. Now, while I do think that was a bluff, they were the team even last year that I would argue had probably some of the best downforce if it wasn't for Ferrari on certain tracks. Now this W14 is pretty close to Aston Martin and downforce, and I would argue that they're kind of the same when it comes to downforce monsters. And I think in corners, they're faster than Red Bull. It's Red Bull that really gains so much on these straights that if they overtake, they're able to just fly away because tracks like the first three that we've had have been very important when it comes to straights. Now, when it actually comes to high speed cornering, Red Bull is very competitive there too, but in medium speed and slow speed is where they can gain. And the second half of the season is very much oriented towards cars that are fast in both medium speed and slow speed corners. Sure, we have tracks like Monza, and I guess Brazil will be pretty tough considering it'll have a huge straight as well, but for the most part, oh, and Las Vegas, I mean, we'll see how that goes. Red Bull should dominate there, but for the most part, most tracks like Zandvoort, like I was already talking about Imola, we're gonna have Monaco, we're gonna have Spain. I mean, really after the sixth race, Mercedes should be competing. And I think Aston Martin and Mercedes might even take that huge step up to fight with Red Bull for most of the tracks. This car is very focused on really being able to pull out that downforce, but what they really needed to do and what is getting worked on is not having that floor be overly complicated. We do know that the Red Bull floor, even though we've not seen any images, the key to what they have done is make this car just have the perfect airflow go through it and really making that top part of the floor very essential to the car being in unison and really making the bottom part what we really can't see, which is the underfloor part of it, pretty simple, but really getting the airflow to just work as one, especially towards the rear of the car. 
Now rear suspension is a key thing towards that. I already talked about that in the diffuser. But really working on the top of the floor. I mean, if you look at the top of the floor of the W14 and the RB19, they are so different, so different. And you can see that the way that the W14 really creates these vortexes is completely different to what the Red Bull is doing. While one car is trying to generate an extreme amount of downforce, the other car is working on unison to really make a fast, speedy flowing car. So completely different design concepts and clearly Mercedes and both even Ferrari didn't go in the right direction when it comes to having straight line speed over downforce or the other way around. Red Bull really got that path down to the T. But this Mercedes B-Spec car could find new gains because listen, these regulations are not completely over and we could see a completely different looking car. Also, this Mercedes squad could really be bringing out something, I guess a bit different, but confirming those huge gains that they really have talked about. They need to essentially gain almost a second to a second and a half with these upgrades. So this car has to be super speedy and Mercedes seems pretty confident they will bring out a fast, quick and efficient car. Now I'd like to see your guys' thoughts down below. Do you guys believe that this Mercedes car will really be that fast and get the best out of the car? Let's see, it'll be a tough mountain to climb, but I do think it's possible, and even Hamilton says it himself. So please leave your thoughts down below, please leave a like, subscribe, it would mean the world, and peace.